Hi, this is clip 2. Let's learn how to use finance calculator. So now this is a uh, video clip that actually show how to use the financial calculator. And this is quite important because you actually need to know how to use it, you know, for the future. And um, I, I found actually a number of good uh, resources in YouTube, so you can actually go to the uh, like BA2 Plus, search BA2 Plus on YouTube website to find some really longer version of the the how to use the calculator. At least you have to know this uh, simple stuff especially for the chapter 4 and 5, 6, 7 actually. So, select your calculator first of all. Uh, let's follow that. And I have the, this one, right? This is a calculator. BA2 plus Texas instrument. Stare at the calculator and there is a, see, this 5 button. And this 5 button is called TVM function time value of my function we're gonna use this TBM function uh, to get the, the present value or future value or even the interest rate or the number of periods so this is the important one but before starting it we actually have to set up you know the calculator there are two starting set up here so let's set up first okay so this is TVM function you know and let's set up the calculator now set up the calculator number one let's change the number of decimal points you know so if you press the second button here this is second right so press second Basically, this is like the shift key of your keyboards. It means that it, now, if you press the second, then you the all button actually change the one above the button, like you know, like this quit set del ins right. And there is button called the format here. So and format. If you press that. You probably have. DEC equals to 2. It means that your number of decimals just 2. Now we have to change at least 4, sometimes 5, maybe change at least 4. So let's change it to the 4. Now to change it, press 4, you know, 4 here, right? And then you press enter button. And this enter button is this one not the equal so press enter then you must have DEC equals to 4 now we can we change the number of decimals to 4 and just clear it and you are gonna have 0 0.0000 okay that's first step now the second step we have to confirm if number of payment per year this P slash Y so this payment per year equals to 1 let's confirm it so again press second and so this one right and then there is a p over y around here i think where is that p over y is here right so press p over y you probably have p over y equals to one if you come from it and just leave it if it is not one then change to one if not then you have to change now press one one and enter again enter is where very top here again enter okay you must have p slash y equals to one so that's how to set up a calculator you need to confirm these two first before using calculator right so now we use we have calculator and let's go back to the slide here okay number of decimals force places and number come from number compounding period equals to one that's the set of the financial calculator now one hint for lump sum problem the lump sum problem is the problem for this chapter just one time cash flow 
you don't have to worry about PMT so there's a PMT here right so again this is the TBM function and there's a PMT here for chapter 4 for lump sum problem so one time cash flow PMT is always 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 zero you don't have to worry about PMT we're gonna use this, this PMT from chapter 5 okay so don't worry about that okay now let's use calculator you deposit hundred dollars for two years ten percent interest what will you have in two years we know that the answer the answer should be 121 this recap problem right so let's draw the timeline again zero one two that's time right now you make a deposit hundred dollars this hundred now when you use the calculator you actually have to like that carefully determine the sign of calculator positive negative actually and this positive means you cash is in so cash inflow and negative means cash outflow so when you draw the timeline here again you deposit hundred dollars what about what's the cash flow direction the direction is from your pocket to the bank right so it's outflow means that you put negative hundred here okay interest rate is 10% for two years how much will you have here for future value so again this negative hundred is not truly negative the value is still hundred dollars but the reason why we put negative is this negative means it cashes out okay we mind the mass mass is simply hundred times one plus 10% squared which is 121 there's no negative numbers the value is still positive 100 but because you make a deposit so your cash is out you put the negative sign to determine the direction of the cash flow which is very critical when you use the calculator so you have to use negative hundred dollar here now let's use the calculator and let's go to the calculator slide okay and this is the calculator slide now again you use these five functions again right so erase one again these five and you don't have to use PMT for this chapter just one when you put the numbers into calculator so again the problem is two years right you put hundred dollars today with ten percent interest how much will you have compute future value right when you pr so we basically enter the numbers in each variable and this variable n is now number of periods so if you use the future value equals one like present value plus one plus r part t actually t is n okay here n equals to two right and then this i over y is interest rate now is interest rate so is r for the formula here i equals to ten percent right Present value is present value, PV is present value. So PV equals to now, you have to put negative sign because this is cash outflow, right? Negative 100. And PMT is now, you just put zero all the time. So that's the calculator input, how to do. Now when you put the numbers into the variable, what you have to do, you have to press number first and then press the variable so when you press when you put the two as an n press two first so number two first and then press n okay and oh 
and you should see n equals to 2 okay for interest rate now press 10 and press i over y you will see i over y equals 10 you have to be very careful because you actually have to uh, put 10 as an interest rate not 0 0.1 for this calculator you have to put the percentage number not the decimals okay so 10 percent simply just 10 it automatically recognizes 10 percent next one is the present value so again you put 100 right you press 100 and now you need to change the sign from positive to negative then that's the key this one so press plus minus and it will change to negative 100 and enter PB you will have PB equals to negative 100 and finally the final one is PMT PMT equals just one, 0 so 0 press PMT you have PMT equal to zero. Okay? And then you press CPT, that's compute. Future value. Okay? Then you must see future value equals to 121. So your future value is 121. That's quite, you know, a uh, useful way to use, you know. So, it's not, it's not difficult at all, actually. And it's a pretty fast way to find the time value of money. Future value, present value. Right? You know, comparing with the, the using formula. Now, one thing you have to know is, now, this calculator, I just use this calculator because we never use this function. But in fact, this calculator actually has some memories. It means that it actually memorized the previous input. So you basically have to clear it. Clear TBM function. You know, to use the function. So I, I recommend you to start with clearing the TBM function when you do this work. And then after finishing the, this job, clear it again. How to clear? Again, press second. And there's a this button, C-A-R TVM. That's clear TVM. Then it clears all the TVM function to zero. You can work on that. If not, then the problem here is your numbers actually, you know, even though you do not put any numbers on the, on the variable, you, that variable may have some value because you put another number in the previous problems it leads to wrong answers right so you have to have to have to clear the calculator okay let's see oh sorry that's calculator how about the now right perspective of the bank now if you are a bank now your customer come and deposit hundred dollars now this hundred is positive because you are a bank right so it's cash inflow basically everything is same except PV equals to hundred and if you compute the future value, your future value will be negative 221 since your customer will withdraw within two years, right? So that's cash outflow for the bank. So it depends on the perspective. You know, you have to stand on the same perspective for the cash flows. I recommend usually the, I, I you always think as probably just as investor's perspective mostly because uh, you know, we are the individuals and individual usually you know, easy to think as an investor's perspective not the company's or bank's perspective but if you choose company or bank's perspective then you have to stand on the same one All right so the answer is negative on 121 it doesn't really mean that it's 
is not negative, it's outflow. Now let's compute the present value. The present value is now same thing, right? So you will receive $121. Now you will receive, so this is in, right? In two years, you make 10% interest. How much deposit you have now? Your future value 121 and equals to interest 10% PMT zero. So what you have to do is 121 future value. Now future value equals 121. 2 and n equals 2. 10 i over y. So i over y is 10 and 0 PMT. And you should see PMT equal to zero, right? You compute present value. You will have PV equals actually negative 100. And this negative again doesn't really mean that your present value of this $121 is negative $100. It means that you actually have to make a deposit to get 121. So this time you make deposit, which means that cash is out. Now, two years later, cash is in. So this negative is cash outflow. Okay. Next slide, in the next video clip, we're going to learn how to compute an NNI.